very excited to greet all of you today uh, at our Hellstack Unicorn Battle for Middle East and Africa. And I'm happy to introduce our uh, Anna Fedorova, it's um, Chief Partnership Officer of Startup Network and CEO of Unicorn Battles. Dear Anna, you have a word. Dear Aline, thank you very much. And I'm really glad to be here today with you and in this wonderful region of Nana and Africa where summer never ends. And we are here due to our sponsors, our global platinum sponsor, Network VC California Seed Fund, and our golden sponsor is Silicon Valley Syndicate Club. Silver sponsor is Sci-Fi Acceleration Program. Our event is the world's largest startup pitch competition 2020 by geography and the number of the events held already this year. And the winner of the today's unicorn battle will join our Unicorn Cup Finals, which will be happening on November 20th. Please, please mark the day in your calendar. It will be one day event. So any time zone is welcome to participate. You can log in from any part of the world because it will be online events. We care for your safety. Please stay with us. Uh, and besides startup speaking live, best startups that the winners of our preliminary income battles there will be also a startup expo so if you're a startup please apply to promote your startup to among the best startups of the world and to meet the wonderful top vcs and investors from all over the world during our grand final this is the second season of our battles and this season we are doing uh, the uh, industry battles, vertical battles. We are doing them in uh, four industries, uh, scanning almost all countries of the world there is, uh, in health tech, fintech, AI, and general battles, industry agnostic, but with some special focus. And of course, we truly believe in our company that the best ideas come through only when the right people are by your side. So partners are welcome. We would like to uh, see you, talk to you. Please uh, approach me or our wonderful event managers and we will talk about exploring partnership opportunities with you. And I'm glad to introduce you to our ecosystem. We are a smart ecosystem that consists of various software solutions, internet platforms that unite startups, investors, business angels, experts, and professional scouts in a single business space, which makes it possible to solve quickly and efficiently any task in the field of innovation and startups. I'm happy to introduce you to the heart of our ecosystem startup network. It's a marketplace for startups, businesses, investors, and service providers. Unicorn Battle is the oldest part of our ecosystem. It's an open competition where startups pitch for private investors and venture funds, and it's a great opportunity for everyone. We have traveled all over the world with our peaceful battle, but of course, we still have countries to explore. So please approach us if you Having, if we haven't been to your city or region yet, and uh, we are doing battles online now due to the restrictions, but of course, when the life comes back to normal, everybody is welcome to join us for our events uh, that we do on a regular basis in uh, Silicon Valley, where our headquarters is. And uh, the, we have done battles for 11 years already, more the did more than 220 of them uh, and we are doing really good job in uh, finding the best startups in inviting the best investors because our winners had managed to raise more than 100 million already and the number keeps growing and our vc community had expanded drastically over the past year and we had really extensive investor opportunities for everyone please meet uh, the sci-fi acceleration program uh, where we help startups to relocate to united states grant them fans and funds and services worth fifty thousand dollars and help them to apply to top american accelerators next is vc california seed fund is our recent entity with two current strategies first one to participate as an investor in our pre-acceleration program for the children startups 
and second one to be a lead investor on our Silicon Valley syndicate fund. And to introduce you to one of our recent entities, I would like to give a floor to my colleague, Julia. Julia, are you uh, with us? Julia is an investor relations director at the CVCY club. Julia? Uh, hi to everyone. Uh, my name is Julia Prisajnuk. I'm investor relations director of Silicon Valley Syndicate Club. We give an opportunity for private investors and business angels to invest together with us into the best startups that we can find through our global ecosystem. It is an international club. Uh, we are officially registered in the USA. Uh, close, uh, close club meetings are held online one or two times a month. Contact me directly uh, if you are interested to know more about the club. I will send my contact to the chat. Good luck to everyone today. Thank you, Julia. We surely need this luck today. And uh, I would like to pass a word to my another colleague, Natalie, who will tell you about the opportunities for the VCs. Right, Natalie? Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you, Anna. And I'm glad to see you, everybody, here today. Uh, I'd like to introduce you to our project VC House. This is an invitation-only online community and a network created exclusively for VCs, where they can exchange their um, deals with the participating as active investors. And what is more, it will be also a platform for specialized offline LPGP events where family offices and institutional investors have an opportunity to meet VC funds. If you have any question about this VC house or uh, would like to join the VC house, please don't hesitate to contact me directly. My contact details will be in the chat. And now I'd like to return the floor to Lilia, who is the host for today's event, and she'll lead you through our unicorn battle. Lydia? Thank you so much for such a great introduction. Um, and uh, I will be happy to move on. Um, firstly, um, I want to say thank you to all of our partners uh, that supported our event. Um, it's our setup uh, and startup called Connect, Clean, Plug and Play, and Sunrise Media. Thank you so much, because you really endorse us to do something more. And our agenda. So you all know that uh, our events, they're um, like strict a little bit, because uh, firstly, we uh, introduce our, our ecosystem, uh, do introduction to our expert board, uh, and then we start our startup competition. And after that, we announce the winners and uh, thanks to our online voting platform, uh, we'll be able to get all results uh, by the end of the last pitch. So be sure it won't be long. And then we'll have time to uh, do some networking. And next, our uh, perfect judges. Um, so you see that uh, we have a really big board today. Uh, and uh, our judges um, uh, really we do appreciate uh, that you volunteer your valuable time uh, today and please introduce yourselves um, and funds you represent shortly uh, for one minute, uh, pointing out uh, industry, check size, uh, state and uh, geographically location of startups you invest in. It is really important for our participants today and for us as well. So. Um, I will be happy to introduce uh, the first one, uh, Alexander Soroka, uh, CEO of Startup Network. Dear Alexander, do you hear us? Uh, okay. I don't see Alexander. Maybe he has some problems. So we can start with. I see Pretty is online. Let's start with Pretty. Pretty has done that many times, right? You know how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Team Startup Network, for having me over again. It's a pleasure, Anna, Liliana, Julia, Natalie, and Alexander, who's missing in action today, but he will be here by and by. 
All the best to everybody participating. I represent InfoCrest LLP as the head of investments, partnerships and alliances. And I'm also the founder of LinkedIn Local India. The average check size is 25K to 150K sector agnostic. Geography, mostly in India. Happy to be here. Yeah. Look forward to the entire day. And thank you very much. Thank you so much for being with us for long. It's great. Uh, so, uh, dear judges, uh, who want to be next? Uh, Babatsune here. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Babatsune from uh, Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, super excited to be here. Uh, well done again to the uh, Startup Network team uh, for the amazing work you continue to do. Uh, we all appreciate the work that you do for companies, for startups, for investors alike. I am representing Le Blue Ventures. Uh, Le Blue Ventures is a venture building slash micro VC firm uh, based on Lagos, Nigeria. And we're focused on technology enabled ventures um, across sectors, really. You know, we've done some things in e commerce. We currently have a portfolio company in cybersecurity. Uh, and I've also personally you know, invested in an agro processing firm in the past. Super excited to be here. Uh, looking forward to. Uh, all the exciting health, health tech startups today. I've worked in health in the last uh, four to five years. So I'm looking forward to uh, the companies that are gonna show today. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so next one. Hi, Lilia. <laughs> hi, 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 Anna. Hi, Natalie. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Kabir Mohammed. I'm from South Africa. I'm the founder of DNA Capital, which is a venture capital fund that is focused purely on South African opportunities. We are only licensed to invest in South Africa. However, we are in the process of setting up a new fund, which would uh, focus on startups within, within the African continent, as well as other emerging markets, and also look at opportunities within uh, Silicon Valley. So this fund will be launching uh, by January 2021. And we look forward to participating with uh, Startup Network as well as the Silicon Valley Syndicate Club, etc. And good luck to all the participants today. We hope uh, that everything goes well for you. And let's see, let's see your pictures. Good luck. Great to have you on board, Kabir. Yes. Thanks, Anna. Thank, thank you, Anna. <laughs> Wonderful. Who wants to be next? There is no special line. Just plug in and tell startups what is tech size and if they're a special industry or your industry agnostic, it's really important for them to hear and maybe you prefer some geography or you're also geography agnostic. Anyone? Well, do you have some? If not. <laughs> Okay. If not, we can move on. Yes. Hi, good afternoon, guys. Um, Hi. I'm Bolade from Lagos, Nigeria. I'm with Kuramo Capital. We specialize in um, fund of fund investments and also direct investments. We are sector agnostic for our direct investments. <laughs> our ticket size usually starts between three to five million dollars. Um, we manage a $500 million fund across um, sub-Saharan Africa. Um, healthcare has um, increasingly become an area of focus for us. And so we appreciate the opportunity to be a part of this um, event. Um, we are increasingly um, having more and more interest in tech-enabled businesses. We were the first um, investors in um, the pioneering um, venture capital fund in Nigeria called ECOVC. And since then, we started to back more and more um, venture capital management and managers across the continent. It's my pleasure to be here and um, I look forward to being blown away by the pitches. Um, thank you, everyone. Cheers. That's wonderful. Blown away. I like it. Let's see. Here's startups. Everybody needs to be blown away by your pitches. So get excited to do that. Yes, Hesham. Welcome. Hi. Hi, how are you? Thank you for, again for the invitation. So hi, everybody. My name is Hesham Drake. I am CEO of Pasha Capital. 
Fasta Capital is an online incubator based out of UAE. We operate globally. We have several programs. The oldest one is where we have a technical co-founder in this 50% of the money needed and doing the whole technical development from A to Z. We already have more than 20 startups graduated. We have already one exit. Uh, we have helped in total more than 400 startups, of course, globally. Uh, we are stage agnostic, country agnostic, and, and doing the whole technical um, industry agnostic. We invest in pre-seed funding. We have already one Series A. Our ticket size is between 50K and up to them. We are stage agnostic country. We invest it was ranked at um, uh, on top 50 um, top investors, uh, uh, top, sorry, to angel investors according to Forbes in 2018. Thank you for inviting me again. Looking forward to the exciting competition and wish great luck for all the participants. Thank you. Thank you, Hesham. Great to have you with us again. And I see McKellen joined us. <laughs> Hi, Anna. Lilia. Hi, McKellen. <laughs> it's hardly, um, hardly ever recorded. Uh, um, hello everyone. Um, it's always exciting to be part of the the unicorn, uh, the startup partners, um, startup that network. These guys have always been making sure that we, some of us who are ecosystem builders, keep pushing these entrepreneurs, these startups to to get to a level where they can be on here. Uh, my name is Makeva. Uh, like they, they mentioned, I am uh, based in South Africa. Uh, we are about uh, fostering entrepreneurship and innovation ecosystem building. We are about uh, support. Uh, McKevin, I'm sorry. Uh, I see that you were muted unexpectedly. Dear McKevin. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. My yeah everything's uh, fine. We can hear you. That, um, we champion ecosystem building across Africa. Uh, we support our startups to be investment ready. We also connect uh, startups, car startup for investors uh, like all of you and connect with mentors across the world. So we are set up a startup about, you know, the startup, uh, all about the startup or the entrepreneurs. So we are glad to, um, to be here. I'm glad to be here to to connect with you guys, to talk to you guys, to look out, to continue to look out for the startups that we have within our continent. Our pride is to see that the startups um, get access to capital, which is why all of you are all, are all here. That's the only thing that will make Africa, uh, Africa's pride, you know, remain, remain intact. So I'm so proud I've been part of the startup, uh, the network for for the last few months, as, I, as much as I can remember, I've been to so many parts Asia, Europe, uh, USA, and it's always exciting, it's always exciting. So, dear judges, dear investors, please let's put our hands together to support this great startup that have spent sleepless nights to develop this product and see how we can take them from where they are to the next level. Otherwise, I am here with you to the end. Thank you all. Thank you, Mike Kevin, for this wonderful pitch. Always glad to see you. Yes, and anyone else would like to say something? If not, we can move on. All right, Lily? Hi, Are Anna. You ready? Sorry. Oh, hi. Sorry, Anna. Yes, sure, go ahead, sure. Yeah, I just have one question which has been a bit unclear to me in, uh, uh -huh. in the last two uh, battles, right? So can Lilia maybe tell us what happened uh, for the top three winners uh, in terms of these startups? What, what, what is the next step? What happens next? Uh, well, as uh, I can do that because I just uh, told you at the beginning of my speech that uh, the winner has an opportunity to pitch at uh, absolutely for free we were it was supposed to be our grand finale in silicon valley computer history museum but we still have persistent restrictions in the usa so we decided to do our finals online and it will be the winners of all the preliminary battles will gather together into it will be a grand final where only the top pcs will be invited and so the top startups also 
that's an opportunity for the winner. And plus, Alexandra will join us in a second. And he was supposed to tell that the winner will be taken to our VC house, uh, where it's a closed invitation only community for the VCs. And there, uh, the winner has an opportunity to personally approach uh, the top VCs. Uh, where they discuss investment opportunities with him, and also it's a great opportunity to fundraise it. Of course, every startup is happy to do that. Uh, so that's like the uh, most near opportunities. The winner has, the second and third place also have the potential to uh, meet precise our investors and top VCs, but it's investment managers will tell them later on in letters. Uh, but that's like the new opportunities they have. Okay, cool. Thank you. No problem. Uh, thank you for asking that. If, uh, dear judges, if you have like some technical issues or would like to ask something precisely, you can always use chat. We are here to hear you and to help you out. And let's move on. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yep, Lily, the floor is yours and we see that you're speaking, but we cannot hear you. Yeah, uh, next uh, important step is uh, how to vote. Because uh, uh, we have to find out who is the winner today. And uh, dear judges, so um, to start voting, you have just to click uh, to uh, the link you've got uh, on your email and uh, you will be redirected to the event page. Uh, you have to scroll the page to the startup section. Uh, next, uh, you'll see the logos and marks uh, beneath. You have to put marks uh, depending on the investment uh, potential from one to five where five is the highest mark and one is the lowest. Um, you have put marks just without any confirmation buttons. Uh, you can change mark uh, before the voting will be closed. Uh, we will close uh, the voting after the last uh, participant uh, finish its speech. Um, and again, if you need any help, uh, please connect me or contact uh, our support team. We will resend the link you or uh, help you to manage it. And dear guests, you also have the opportunity to support our participants today. Um, so you can use uh, uh, our event uh, page official and uh, uh, put uh, uh, like or dislike to our participants. And it will also uh, uh, influence on on them. So uh, uh, we have great nine startups to pitch today and um, I would like to tell that uh, each founder will have three minutes to pitch and extra three minutes to have a Q&A session uh, with our expert board. Uh, dear guys, uh, we recommend not to mention fundraising out loud because uh, we are broadcasting our events and uh, um, some countries have restrictions uh, in this regard. Uh, please use chat or other channels of uh, communication um, of this particular reason. So thank you all of you. And uh, based on our results, uh, one startup will be chosen as the winner of the unicorn battle. So please welcome our startups. And startup number one, will rock our pitch session. So, uh, dear Bramil, please uh, get ready and share your screen. Your three minutes will start uh, at the moment you began to speech. Dear Bramil. Great. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, so we see your presentation. Do a full screen. Mm 
Mm -hmm. I see your video. Perfect. Good. So start as you're ready. So uh, hi everyone, it's afternoon here. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I, I don't think there's any good evening. But my name is Brahman Mwalo. I'm the founder of Zetova, a one-year-old company off in Nairobi. Uh, what we do is we build technology for procurement, which is, uh, we believe, the largest marketplace in Africa. So in the wake of COVID-19 uh, pandemic, we realize in the supply chain there's a lot of disruption. For instance, the the, the other disease burdens existing in the continent, which has the largest disease burden in the world, did not take a break. For instance, malaria continue going on, tuberculosis and all that. Uh, disease burden that exists on the continent continued. Uh, so there was a need for uh, technology that allows countries to be better prepared and to continue managing the existing disease burden at the same time deal with the outbreak of a pandemic. So basically Zetova, the company, well, we came up uh, around March this year to develop technology that will help countries be prepared in that. So a bit of background in terms of health security and resilience planning. Uh, just imagine a mother being able to access malaria treatment for an infant and uh, you know, uh, probably HIV patients being able to access their antiretrovirals, that's health security planning. Country's ability to safeguard the health uh, security of its uh, uh, citizens. So COVID has greatly exposed this problem. Um, so four things have defined how countries have dealt with this pandemic and many other you know, disease burdens. How are these countries prepared to manage disease threats? How are they organized to respond to these threats? And can they afford these disease burdens? And how are the main responders coordinated? So in a nutshell, uh, ASA, the platform that Zetova uh, developed is an artificial intelligence driven platform that is able to use supply chain data to track disease burden and work backwards in terms of uh, coordinate decision making that needs to happen towards the procurement of essential healthcare products. That is to make sure that 70% of the population in Africa, that actually depends on either donor funded or government funded health sector can access these products on time. So that's the basic idea around uh, the, the, the technology. So the technology te capability simply is we build it using artificial intelligence where uh, we spend quite some time in terms of, you know, uh, training the models to consume data, uh, you know, uh, purchase data, uh, order data from different healthcare activities. And we've done a pilot in Kenya from around 7,000 health facilities. And the model is able to, you know, uh, pro pro provide, uh, uh, the model is able to provide insight in terms of what is to come, predict what is coming and work backwards in terms of decisions and coordinate. On top of it, we'd be Looks like we have a technical issue or something like that. Yeah, uh, but well, sometimes but I... it's online. <laughs> it's not a live feed when you can solve issues. Uh, dear Bramiel, yeah, can you can you stop the screen sharing? Mm -hmm. yes. Sometimes, sometimes happens. It's Africa, it's <clears throat> hard to connect Africa, US, Europe, and Asia. Okay, maybe we can move to number two. And when uh, we'll get back up number one appears again. Oh yeah, I can see him connecting. Oh, so much people worry. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Hello again. Welcome back. 
Sorry, sorry. Yes, so it was a bit of a power blackout, but I'm back now. Lila, how much time do we have to go? Uh, actually, your three minutes were up uh, before oh, the technical right. issues, but we okay. have three minutes for a QA session. So, dear judges, okay. uh, please be active. Um, Bramil uh, is the first one. <laughs> yeah, Bramil, can you uh, share your video so the judges can see you? You can stop sharing the screen and switch on your video. <clears throat> Ramel, can you put on your video? Yes, it's on. Mm, no, it's not. <laughs> oh. Yep, oh. now it is. Exactly. So, hi, Bramwell. Uh, very good uh, and very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, this is Babatune from Lagos, uh, Nigeria. I'm quite curious. You mentioned that you've been operating for a year. So what's the current progress of your startup? Specifically, what's the business model? And how are you doing you know, with what you've done so far in the last one year in terms of traction? So uh, we, are, we are basically a, a pre-revenue. Uh, so we're basically a pre-revenue startup. We just uh, finished the uh, MVP. We've just tested the MVP. We spent quite uh, mo most of the one year building and testing uh, the technology. So we are just about to go to market. We're launching our go-to-market in January 2020. So that's what we've done. Um, yeah, so I guess in terms of a stage, that's the stage where we are. The traction we've done, the piloting, uh, we have worked with Ministry of Health in Kenya. So most of our piloting has been done in Nairobi. We've worked with the Ministry of Health uh, ecosystem that we've tested the, the, the product is with around 7,000 health facilities. So technically that's 80% of uh, the healthcare ecosystem in Nairobi. So that's about 30 million people who are affected by that ecosystem. So Sorry, that, that, that's, that's fine, that's Bravo, because you don't have a lot of time. Just one quick question. So what's the business model going to be? How do you see this, you know, generating income when you, revenue when you start? All right. So for every supply chain, there is a supply and the financials. So basically for all contracts, because of the integrity that we built around contracts issued in sub buying of healthcare products, these contracts, uh, the business need is 70% of them require financing from banks. So that's now where the partners that we have, like the banks will finance and the, you know, tracking of the contracts and the, on the platform, a marketplace where we have for every contract that is financed by the banks, banking partners that we have, we get, you know, a, a commission on it. And then there is subscription models, annual subscription models. And then there is also a SaaS model, which people pay licenses for. So we have three revenue tracks for it, which we have tested already for the partners we've had. Bradley, well, I'm gonna ask you, I'm gonna ask you two questions. And again, just a bit of, because my wish is to, to see many startups get invested in. Next time you cut, you, you, you were up quickly. So next time when, you are, when somebody asks you a question with regard to what you didn't put, make sure you put that screen of that particular thing up so that people could see, so that you don't waste, you don't waste much time again explaining. First thing first, you need to really tell us the team behind, behind, behind this initiative. That is one quickly if you can. If you, if, if, if you can. All right, so uh, currently Zatova has a team of about uh, 15. We have 15 uh, employees. Uh, four, the main leaders are four. Uh, I am the managing director of uh, commercial lead operations. There's community manager. There's a product development manager. All of us are, if, you know, uh, if we, I'll share, I can share the LinkedIn profile of them. So uh, because of time, you can evaluate uh, most of the team members on the LinkedIn. So have you guys already have any financial backing to this? You guys have raised any funds through the launch, through the, after, uh, since you guys launched? Have you guys made any money? No, no, no. So we've funded the product till now ourselves. So we are just launching our, 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 our pre-seed raise right now. So that's what we're doing. That's part of the reason why we are in, in this, uh, these challenges and working together with, with, uh, with various funds where we can actually raise. All right. Mm. Thank you. OK. 
Okay, thank you so much. Uh, our three minutes uh, uh, has already begun. Uh, our second participant startup that is called Weak Claim. Please, uh, Mr. Zaid, uh, get ready. Share your screen. I see you are preparing. Hi, everyone. Hi, switch on your video as well. Is it working? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, I have a green screen. Who else sees it? Yes, yeah, same with me, just green screen. Now, can you see it? Uh, yeah, I suppose we have a bad connection. Uh, that's why it takes long to uh, download our presentation at once. Is it appearing now? Um, yeah, but still we have some uh, try to uh, click uh, on the next slide. Let's check how it works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it works good. Perfect. Can you put on your video? So we can see you, not your picture, but you. Yeah, um, I'm activating the camera, but maybe the shadow of the, the sun shadow back because I would change my location, if you allow me, please. Um, anyway, it's better to switch on. It's important to, to see who is pitching. Is it okay now? Uh, presentation? Perfect. Oh, no. The camera? Yeah. And video, please. Hi, everyone. This is Zaid Al-Jazi, uh, Quick Claim co-founder and CEO. Quick Claim is a fintech peer-to-peer -peer settlement and investments platform catering to the medical insurance industry. This will create a new streamlined financing marketplace for health claims. The current situation in the medical insurance industry that is that the patient check in with the doctor. The doctor verifies the patient's insurance papers and documents. By then, the doctor issues on the insurance claim policy. Uh, at, that, at that stage, the doctor bulks all the invoices to the insurance company, and the insurance company takes around 45 days to process the whole documents and the claim invoice. Eventually, the doctor receives the payment in another 45 days. Basically, this is a 90, da 90 days process from issuance of the claim until the payment of the claim, which is happening by the third party administrators who are um, um, taking this role at the current stage for limited accounts and not on a regular basis. The problem is that this whole process of 90 days affects the SMEs, in which most of the healthcare providers, the SMEs, are, are considered to be uh, SMEs. The, uh, the, uh, for example, the, the pharmacies pay upfront for the pharmaceutical factories to, uh, uh, for, to receive uh, the medicines, in which this affects the cash flow uh, capability that they uh, have. This one shows that the pharmacies suffer the most from the cash flow gaps in Jordan, according to the uh, Ministry of Health and the Insurance uh, Annual Reports. Our solution is to create a marketplace for, uh, to bridge the liquidity gap and onboard the investor, the insurance, and the healthcare provider on one platform where QC, quick name, is uh, on uh, 
was an un unbiased basis from everyone and on a uh, specific distance from all stakeholders. This will increase the liquidity gap for the SCPs and this will regulate the cash cycle and it will create a financing market base. In addition, it will manage by the same timeline. The technology is to have a synchronized settlement framework where the investor, when receiving the early finance, will grant the claim ownership uh, when the SCP, sorry, receive the final, early finance from the investor, will grant the investor the claim ownership and by then the investor receives on behalf uh, of the healthcare provider the due amounts from the insurance company. This one shows that the pharmacies post a claim, for example, on $10,000, the investor visits the marketplace and accepts the terms and, and the discount on the platform. By then the transaction happens here and the billing assignment of claims agreements takes place between the pharmacy, for example, and the investor. And eventually the insurance company gets notified by day 90. Uh, I'm the CEO, as mentioned. And this I'm sorry, but time. your time is up. We have to stop Thank you. you. Uh, and uh, let's start our Q&A session. The judges, your turn. Yeah, do you have MVP or maybe you have already a traction? Hello. Hello. Sorry. Do you have traction? Do you have revenues, or you just have MVP for today? Do you hear me? I hear you. Yes. <clears throat> Do you have any traction as for today? Revenues, clients. Traction? Yes. Revenues or clients? Or um, we are at the idea stage now. We have just uh, have uh, get, get finance, early finance on the idea stage. And our uh, minimum viable product is under development. Um, okay. uh, we are in the, the code coding uh, phase. We have just finished the design phase. And hopefully we will uh, test uh, or start with the pilot uh, test in uh, mid of October this month, uh, maximum by end of this month. And our business identity, basically, if I may explore more, is to have uh, is we, that we have an approval from the Central Bank of Jordan to run our pilot project uh, in Jordan under the sandbox test. Okay, thank you. Okay, we have uh, one minute for question. It's really too early for VCs to <laughs> evaluate the, the startup. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, we're going to move on. So last chance to ask something. Okay, no questions. Um, McKevin? Yes? Something? To ask? No. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Zaid. Uh, stay with us and uh, we move to our next participant, startup number three. It's our great startup. Yeah, Cardio Diagnostics, you're in. I see uh, the presentation, it works good. And um, yeah, and I want to check your video. I'm looking for you. Yeah, I see. Perfect. All right, perfect. Can I, can I start? Sure. Awesome. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Wissam Blos from Cardio Diagnostics, and today I'm going to walk you through our business. So Cardio Diagnostics is a medical technology company which focuses on services and remote patient monitoring. And uh, we were focused on uh, diagnostic cardiology and more recently diabetes and hypertension and other chronic conditions as well. So chronic diseases result in seven in 10 deaths in the United States with 130 million or over 130 million uh, people suffering from one or more chronic conditions in the US. So you can see there's a huge market in the US. So for cardiac monitoring, defining the clinical need for cardiac monitoring in particular, 
we have 4 million Americans who have arrhythmias, 2.7 of which are atrial fibrillation, which causes uh, strokes and heart disease. They have a high risk for uh, strokes and heart disease. So long-term cardiac monitoring, like uh, we provide, increases the diagnostic outcomes by three times. Now for chronic disease management, six in 10 adults in the US have chronic diseases, and this results in $3.5 trillion in healthcare costs annually. So remote patient monitoring, or RPM, which is another uh, software we provide, increases patient compliance by five times and patient outcomes by two times. So this is our cardiology line. We work with FDA cleared wearable uh, cardiac devices. We link them up to our cloud-based software called CloudBeat. And we also offer the monitoring services to analyze the data collected. So this is actually the world's first hardware agnostic cloud-based cardiac monitoring software. So hardware agnostic, meaning we work with any device as long as it's FDA approved, we can link it to our software. And cloud-based, meaning we don't use the typical servers that other providers used to use without the hassle of the servers. We offer cloud-based technology, which is accessible as long as you have an internet connected device from anywhere at any time. And these are actually some images of the devices we can work with. So we also have the HIPAA compliant cardiac monitoring centers in the US and the first HIPAA compliant uh, monitoring centers outside of the US as well. These are actually samples of our reports, which we can customize depending on what the physicians require. So according to what they need. And now moving to our remote patient monitoring software. So to do this, we actually work with different manufacturers to integrate their devices into our mobile app where the patient can measure their data. And this is actually communicated to our cloud-based software for the physicians to actually analyze and provide reports as well, similar to the CloudBeat product. So to do this, you just connect the device, automatically measure and visualize the data. And we also have goal tracking approaches to increase compliance. We can chat with physicians, schedule appointments, and even have video consultations with our physicians. Lastly, what do our customers value in us? Our quality, flexibility, and customer experience. And we work with large companies such as GE, Abbott, and even smaller companies and the whole spectrum in between. And lastly, our financial metrics. So the company is cash flow positive. Our re recurrent revenue has quadrupled since COVID-19. And our new growth lines are growing at 223% per month. And our next round for investment is the end of 2021. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, your timing is great. And uh, dear judges, we have a Q&A session with Cardio uh, Dex. Anna, this is a great, this is a great initiative. It seems as if you didn't need to be here because you're only raising funds at the end of 2021. Uh, it means that it's a year from now. But another thing is your market reach. I see you keep talking only about the U.S. What is it about Africa that uh, your product cater, uh, caters for? And, and um, actually, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, if correct me if I'm wrong, the question is, uh, what are we offering in the Middle East and uh, as Africa? Yes, because yeah, I can see from your diagram you've mentioned a lot about the U.S. Yes, sure. Um, actually, we do operate in the Middle East and Africa. Our main focus has been the U.S. because of the insurance reimbursement that they offer. So it's been a more perceptive market. But we do have our operations and our clients operating in the U.S. in the Middle East, U.S. and Africa as well. All right. Can you explain uh, who are your clients? Uh, uh, do you have B two B model? Yeah, uh, great question. So we do have a B2B model where we work with hospitals and testing facilities, even some manufacturers as well. But we recently launched a B2C model for uh, direct, uh, direct interactions with the hospitals and physicians. So we have both B2C and B2B models depending on the product we're talking about. Okay, but you wrote in your profile that you have already 35 clients, yes? Yes, yes. <clears throat> Who are they? Uh, these clients are actually mainly focused on these uh, testing facilities, as I mentioned, and certain large companies where we can create software for them particularly. Uh, in terms of B2C, this was recently launched, I'd say about a month ago, so we are still gaining traction on that front. Okay, but uh, why 
for example, the owners of devices, I mean, producers of devices, uh, need to share information with you. Usually they have their own software which analyze the data. Um, Lisa, would you like yes. me? Uh, sure, sure, go ahead. All right, so this is uh, Joanna. I'm on uh, with Sam's team. I'm actually the Director of Sales and Operations globally at Cardio Diagnostics. So to answer your question, basically uh, regarding the clients, uh, most of our clients are hospitals in the US and in the Middle East. Uh, we also have a SaaS model that services uh, monitoring centers or remote uh, cardiac monitoring centers in the US in particular. And we've also created the monitoring center in the Middle East that basically services 12 countries in the Middle East and Africa. Uh, so we do the remote monitoring using our software, uh, using our software and our services. Now regarding your question of um, why do those manufacturers want to, wanna, you know, integrate with us? So basically our software and what it provides customers is actually unprecedented uh, globally. So the features, the customizations, ability, the scalability, ability, and the flexibility in the workflow of our software is not like any other software out there in the market. And usually those manufacturers, whether it's on RPM, so glucose monitors, uh, et cetera, or whether it's cardiac uh, monitoring manufacturers, filters, et cetera, they only focus on devices because devices in this industry is actually a commodity. So um, they are actively looking for software providers and service providers that can complete their whole offering to give the, the device, the software, and the service basically for this solution. Okay, so I will introduce you to hardware device producers we have in our portfolio. Uh, the company which is called Cardiom, I will send them in the chat. So probably uh, they will be your client if it's uh, so. If your software is really so good, why not? Okay. And uh, uh, what revenue do you have for today? Um, for the last year, for example, last year revenue. Uh, Joanna, would you care to take that? Hello. Well, um, I'd, I'd have to say our revenue since we started is in the seven digits. Um, sadly, I can't divulge more given my standing in the company, but we are in the seven digits revenue uh, since, since we started. Sorry about that. I got cut off for a few uh, minutes. Uh, yeah, we are talking about revenue. Okay. All right. Last, last year revenue. I, as I understood, it's uh, seven zero uh, figure, yeah? Sure, it's in the seven digits, correct. Well, okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so more questions? Okay. Uh, if no questions, we will move on. Uh, dear participants, uh, get ready. Startup number four, Madcate Network. Uh, and dear judges, I would like to remind you that to, you have to vote. Uh, we're almost uh, in the middle. So do not forget about this important role. Okay. Uh, dear Luis, you're here. Um, okay, I don't see your video. Hi, everyone. Uh, wait a sec. Yeah, I see you. Perfect. Uh, I'm audible. Yeah. All right. So good morning, evening, and afternoon to everyone. Uh, I'm here to present MedKit. MedKit is uh, an uh, IT platform that supports, uh, it's an infrastructure built to support pharmacies um, with financing for their inventory, as well as data uh, management uh, systems. Um, the overview of what we do, um, basically it's just um, accelerating community pharmacies. So we map out ph pharmacies that would like to partner with us and clinics. We give them stock financing, a point of sale or pharmacy, uh, hospital business management system. Um, we offer them coaching and consultation because we are experts in this uh, sector. Um, and uh, We've been mostly working with startups, uh, but there's opportunity to work up with already established pharmacies. 
some market statistics about the Kenyan market. We have a population of 50 million. 80% um, of the 5,000 pharmacies and 10,000 hospitals and clinics don't use uh, a standardized smart data collection or data management system. So what then happens is they are not even able to access, um, they're not able to do proper forecasting and quantification as well as uh, access funding for expansion. Um, and of course, this number is just for the registered pharmacies and the clinics. Uh, the number is even double this uh, of the actual ones on the ground uh, in need of this solution. Um, the pharma market is uh, 1.5 billion US dollars, and uh, that's in the Kenyan market. And of course, the East African market then brings us to seven times that. The expected impact of using our system or our partnerships with uh, the pharmacies that partner with us is they have timely data to do uh, their medication and uh, interventions. Uh, they have improved um, essential medicines and vaccine supply chain security, especially during this time of COVID, because now data is there and they're able to focus and, uh, and, uh, and track. Um, there is uh, efficiency in collaboration with other healthcare workers, referral, the data is just, the patient data is portable. Uh, there's improved medication use and disease surveillance. Um, there is also reliable operational data for business operations and sustainability, or even financing for, for startups to expansion. Uh, because one of the things that we see in Kenya is that um, every year, a thousand pharmacies never see their first year anniversary and the reason mostly is because just the data is not even reliable. The team, so we are two of us, uh, we of, of course we have employed uh, uh, project team, uh, development team, uh, so there's myself and uh, Edwin. Edwin is based in the US so he supports us remotely uh, and also is a shareholder in the business. Um, our details, our revenue model is uh, we have 5% that we charge on the cost of sales. We, we have multiple ways of growing that. Um, uh, in return, we give them a uniform pharmacy management system, branding template, medicines, and the uh, best market in the, in, for their pharmaceuticals. Um, our advantages is um, um, we don't ask for collateral, like what is asked by many uh, other people in, the, in that sector. So our competitors with uh, Helium Health out of uh, West Africa, we also have some access uh, also in West Africa and East Africa. And the market is huge for us to, to do what we are doing right now. So the partnerships that we are looking for right now, um, I founded the largest co uh, corporate chain of pharmacies uh, in 2007 and exited that in 2019. Um, I've been now using that expertise to consolidate into the system and structures. So, so what we are looking for is um, maybe an early stage investment partner who can offer technical assistance, mostly even just for packaging what we have uh, in readiness for attracting scale and um, uh, Series A type of funding. So those are our needs right now. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. And Q&A session, dear judges, be active, we are worried. Okay. So do you guys have do you guys have clients already? Yes, we do. Um, we we have uh, twenty clients on the on the system, and uh, three of them that we are funding um, for their entire stock needs. The rest just use the system as um, as just uh, for managing of their data. What is the equivalent of your funding to the, to uh, to your client? The funding terms, that we have out in terms of money, if you if you equivalent that to turn a lot of money. Also, for the three that we have right now, we have um, uh, close to forty. Uh, is that forty US dollars? Yeah, forty thousand US dollars. Sorry. Um, that uh, and remember, we started funding this year. Um, so it's because we managed to bring up the system to a point where we are able to collect the bankings every day in the system and uh, we're able to be paid from that. So, so yes, that's how much we've put in so far. We uh, are willing to put in more. How much have you guys made so far as a company? So, sorry? How much have you guys made so far? So we, we out of that, we levy a 5% margin on the cost of sales. So we haven't really been uh, tracking uh, how much we've made or 
so to speak, because at the moment we've just been uh, sort of piloting it and tracking and seeing is it meeting the needs of these pharmacies. And remember, they are startups. Yes. And uh, you guys are also startup. Yes, uh, for this particular venture, yes, we are startups, and the pharmacies that we are uh, supporting uh, because of the uh, we were just interested in just finding out what we testing the model to see if it works. So, and we found that it actually works. There's uptake and uh, uh, the, the users are finding benefit of it, yeah. Is it a model that can scale beyond Kenya? Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, it can scale beyond East Africa. Um, even in West Africa, uh, we know Helium uh, Health are doing it uh, in, um, in West Africa. Uh, of course, East Africa is a, is a, is a unique market in itself. So with our expertise in this market, we actually have a better place to scale within East Africa for this solution. Okay. Thank you. Um, and we have like 10 seconds for a question. Dear judges, do we have to move on? If it, no one doesn't have any question, I'd like to ask him about his competitors. Yeah. Sure. The competitors at the moment is Helium Health uh, um, and uh, Farm Access. So the, the difference that they have, um, so Helium Health uh, have a pharmacy management system and a hospital management system, and they, um, they lend against, you know, if, just from the data that they have collected, they're able to lend against that. So, so we, on the other hand, have been, you know, for the last 15 years, we've run pharmacies, community pharmacies and clinics. So we've moved from that area and now we are coming into the area of sort of coaching and supporting and mentoring these uh, pharmacies and clinics to sort of scale the challenges of, uh, of, of doing business in Africa. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, judges. Thank you so much. Um, please. Um, uh, shut down the presentation and we will go next. Uh, I'm happy to introduce uh, startup number five. Please get ready, share your screen, switch on your video. Dear Christian, we want to see you. Thank you, Lilia. Can you see the screen and can you see me? Yeah. Uh, I see your screen perfectly and I see you. Let's move. Perfect. Thank you very much for having me. I'm Christian Hens, Universal Diagnostics Managing Director. 40% of all of us in this Zoom call will develop cancer in their lives. But we don't know who, we don't know where, and we don't know when. The only solution to that problem is detecting cancer in the pre-cancer stage early so we can have much higher treatment success. That represents a huge opportunity. The cancer diagnostics industry today is $250 billion in size and growing by 7% every year. Now, the holy grail in this is detecting it early, preventing cancer with a simple blood-based test. And that's what we're trying to do at Universal Diagnostics, making cancer curable by detecting it with a simple blood-based test. If I want you to take one thing away from this call today, we're number one in early detection and prevention of cancer. We're focused on colorectal cancer primarily. Now, we've presented our results at leading conferences globally. The last one at the beginning of this year at the Association of Cancer Research in the United States. 77% sensitivity in colorectal cancer and 88% specificity with our biomarker blood-based test is much better than any commercially available test right now there in the market. But what's more, even more exciting, we are also available to detect the pre-cancer stage. 62.5% sensitivity and 87.5% specificity is absolutely unique. And it means disruption in healthcare because we can actually prevent cancer altogether, reducing incidence rates. How do we want to commercialize the test? Very simple, very straightforward, integrating it with existing lab floors. That means working with clinical labs, running the tests on commercially available equipment, uploading the raw data to the cloud, where we then run our algorithm 
and provide results of positive or negative. Positive means you should go for other additional um, diagnostics like a colonoscopy, which is invasive, or negative, you come back in one to two years and we do the test again. What makes me really exciting beyond that is that we start to see that our approach also works on other cancers. We've just presented at September this year at ESMO GI the results on lung, breast, and pancreatic cancer. And you see that the stage one detection that we achieved there of 75% is absolutely mind blowing. So let's bring it together. We're number one in early detection colorectal cancer. We have proof to detect other cancers. We work with the AT hospital network globally and have a key opinion lot board that supports us. Where do we take it now? Commercialize a test, develop lung cancer and pancreatic cancer test and build UDX globally. All of that driven by a top management team that has IPO and NASDAQ experience. Thank you very much. Thank you, Christian. So, uh, dear judges, let's move to the Q&A session. Christian, can you tell us uh, maybe once more about the evidence that it really works? I see that you, you are working with AT, uh, AT hospitals, yeah? Yes. And uh, these are pilots. So this... Yes, so we've, fundamentally we've collected 12,000 blood samples and we're running these in the development of our, of, our, of our test. And what shows you that this works are studies and publications like this that we did together with Stanford University, where we take a test set, where we, de where we look for our biomarkers, run our, develop our algorithm, and then validate it on a completely independent set um, that, um, there, where, where there's no overlap with the training set. So it actually gives the real results and we always compare us against the gold standard, which is the colonoscopy. In that way, we always know if it works or not. And um, that's how it was done. So yes, it works. Yes. Uh, okay. And uh, I, I saw in your profile that you have already raised 30 million in the last round, yeah? Correct. Or uh, before. And what was uh, the evaluation? Um, I would prefer to take that to a private conversation later uh, on. Okay. okay. Great, no problem. But I'm. Thank you for the interest. I'll take that down. <laughs> Lilia. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. Um, thank you. We have actually one extra minute for Q and A Q &A session, uh, dear judges. Do I have uh, yeah, a question, please. So, uh, what is the false positive and false negative uh, in your study? When you are doing these tests, how many turn out to be positive by your study and then they are negative? Yes, that's a very good question. So our, um, uh, essentially that's how we measure uh, our test performance. Uh, we are right now at 77% sensitivity, 88% specificity. That means out of 100 colorectal cancer patients, we are detecting 77. We are missing 23. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, out of mm -hmm. 100 uh, controls, meaning healthy patients, we identify 88 to be healthy, okay? If you compare that with any other uh, test that is out there right now, mm -hmm. it, uh, sort of non-invasive tests, of course, that is much better than anything there is. It's a little bit worse than colonoscopy, but that's a gold standard, and it's a massively invasive procedure that um, will be the consequence of doing our, uh, having a positive results of the UDX test. Make sense, Hesham? Thank you. So just okay. to be sure that I understood you, what, what you are doing is essentially getting um, a blood sample and you are running uh, some kind of AI algorithm and you are able to detect with good accuracy that you have described already whether this person has this kind of cancer or not, just based on the blood test and just based on the neural network or whatever algorithm that you have developed. Is that correct? Exactly. And you summed it up much better than I could ever do. Yes. Interesting. Yeah, thank you. Interesting. I have no more questions. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I just have a very quick question. Uh, first of all, great technology. Um, I'm Wiza representing uh, Plug and Play here in MENA. I just wanted to know if you were familiar with um, a sort of similar startup that uh, now is uh, has um, IPO'd Garden Health. 
do you see similarities First. between your technologies? Um, yeah, so um, I mean, there's uh, certain similarities in our technology. Um, the gold star product of Garden Health is um, a test that is uh, currently um, used in treatment guidance. Okay, mm -hmm. so it's a little bit later in the process where you look at if someone has been diagnosed with cancer, then the question becomes, how do we best treat that patient? Okay, and the 360G test from Garden Health focuses on providing the information, which mutation is present in the cancer patient, and therefore, what type of treatment should you do? Chemotherapy, radiotherapy, uh, etc. Dif there's many different options but that's a gold star product uh, of Garden Health. They recently said they would like to move into our space as well. And actually we're in contact with them because they find our advanced adenoma data incredibly exciting. Great. Uh, that's great to hear then that you're working together. Thank you. No more question. And you are pre-revenue yet. Yep. Yes. Great. Yes, unfortunately, yes. Uh, but uh, developing these tests uh, on a clinically sound basis um, uh, it, it takes a moment because we're running clinical trials that recruit thousands of patients and uh, it, uh, to make sure that it works. So it takes a moment. We are pre-revenue yet, but we, um, our commercialization strategy is that we will commercialize the test beginning of 2022 via clinical labs um, around the world. We are actually talking to potential clinical labs uh, in the Middle East right now. Um, and uh, anyone who could provide contacts to labs in Africa would be more than happy to reach out to them. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, and we have to uh, move to our next participant, uh, Mr. Hassan. Please uh, share your screen. I know that you are ready already. <laughs> How are you? Amazing startups until now. I'm not, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Just a second. Let me see if I can share my screen. Can you see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Just a second. Okay. Can you hear my voice okay? Because I'm not in the best place in the world here right now. It's okay? Yeah. It's okay, worth, thank you very much. Good. Let's start. Hello, my name is Jose Robinger and I'm representing Kitchen Able team from UA. Imagine your life today if you had never been able to hold a pencil but could understand everything that your parents are saying to you. Julia, for example, that was born with cerebral palsy. And sorry. Uh, denying people with disabilities their right to education has a lifelong impact on learning, achievement, and employment opportunities. They are not learning how to improve their skills in early childhood. How many thoughts become unexpressed? How many stories were not told? The social impact is huge. Schools are not prepared, children are segregated, and millions are not inside the schools. But I have good news. Julia still can hold a pen, but she can write and is learning inside a regular classroom. Ahmad can't say a word, but he can communicate and study. And everything started because of this man. He was born in cerebral palsy and graduated in computer science using this head pointer and came up with a great idea. Together with him, we developed KX, a keyboard that works with the combinations of colors and symbols and is part of an all-in-one set of patented assistive tools that together with our educational platform that uses AI to build tasks and activities in less than five minutes, we are far ahead from our competitors. Our solution helped Allison to publish his first book. Uh, and, we, and he can even hold a pen. It also made Marina go to university and graduate in journalism. But this is not only a humanitarian cause. It's a 22 billion market that grows every year. More than 15% of the population has some kind of disability. In the UAE alone, we have thousands of students waiting for our solution. And if you go for only 10%, we are talking about 30 million market for the next three years. In the MENA region, multiply this by 20. It's unbelievable. But are we profitable, predictable, and scalable as a social impact venture? Of course we are. Our revenue comes from direct sales plus monthly subscription plans that we call accessibility as a service. 
we are the only one solution, all in one solution for schools, rehabilitation centers, healthcare professionals, and also for the end users. Uh, for example, uh, we installed the, the solution inside the classrooms and we train the teachers and the caretakers to use them with the children or the patient. By doing that, we give them autonomy so they become the main actors in their learning process, which of course, you shorten the time that they usually take to develop their skills. Working with this model, we finished our year with more than 4,000 users, 400 schools, and $600,000 in revenue last year, bootstrapping. That was only possible because of our fantastic team. Only in this picture, we have 200 years in experience. I have been working in technology since 1981, always as an entrepreneur and had two exits in Brazil. Marcelo, William and Alexandre have been working in sales, technology and in the educational field for the past 20 years. This is our tech team, you name it and they will build it. And of course, we have the woman power in our team. They are the knowledge department, they have all the answers. Let's make the future possible for these kids. They will be able to work inside our companies and maybe we can find some geniuses. If you would like to learn more, please come see uh, after the presentation. Dear Jose, thank you so much. Um, you are in timing. Dear judges, it's your turn, Q&A session. You're doing a really great job, um, but can you explain the business model? Yes, I can. Uh, actually, we have an all-in-one set of assistive technology developed by us, developed there in Brazil. And what we do is we concentrate all the other assistive technology that there is in the market. And we also created an educational platform that starts from the beginning, the communication, one, two, three years old. Then we go to the learning process and then we go to the... Um, for example, math and actually in Brazil it's Portuguese, but here it's English and other languages. And we put all of them inside the schools for teachers, uh, shadow teachers, caregivers. Uh, they they use uh, the solution with the kids, so it gives them uh, plenty of information uh, while they were they are very young in early childhood. Okay, but who who's paying for your services? Okay, sorry. Uh, the school pays for the service in a subscription-based model. We also sell this to uh, parents because when they see their children uh, using this in the schools, they can also uh, buy with us in a subscription model plan. Mm -hmm. And you already have some traction, yes? Yes, we have already 400 schools and around 5,000 users at the moment. Okay. Mainly in Brazil, we also have some here in the, the region, in, I'm here in the UAE, and we also have in the United States and in Chile. Mm -hmm. And you are located in Brazil? Actually, I'm living here in Abu Dhabi, uh, because oh, we, okay. uh, yes, we, we are part of Microsoft for the Startups and Hub71, but everything is going very well, thanks God, in Brazil. Okay, okay, okay thank you. Okay, thank you. How much are you selling them and how did you get to the price? How much? Sorry, again? Yes, how much are you selling your product and how okay. did you get to the pricing? Uh, we, we have a subscription model uh, that var varies from $80 to uh, $600 per month because, for example, the families they only need some of the assistive technology so they can uh, actually uh, go for a subscription plan for only what they need. But when I talk about rehabilitation centers and the schools, they need all the solution. So, uh, of course, we have also consultancy that we can sell and also uh, any other thing that they need to, to put this inside the schools and rehabilitation centers. Okay. Anyway, that's, a good, that's a good initiative. Thank you very much. We are making so many parents and kids very happy every day. It's, it's something very important to see. This is the equipment, actually one of the parts. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you, Hassan. And we move on to startup number seven. Uh, dear Yusuf. 
please switch on your video and share your presentation. Sure. I'm sharing my screen. Yeah, I... Mm. Is it clear? Yep, I see your presentation, uh, but there's some noise, still some noise from your side. How about now? Hello? Uh, it gets worse. <laughs> I will change the Wi Fi screen. Um, please uh, do a full screen of your presentation. Okay. Uh, so I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Yusuf and I'm the founder of Julib. Uh, before I start, uh, I will share our story. Uh, I was working in the uh, pharmaceutical fields in sales and marketing uh, for five years. And uh, I was spotting some opportunities and gaps. And in 2018, we started uh, Julep as a pharmacy aggregator. Uh, we launched an application where users can order their, pharma their pharmacy products and it gets delivered to their house. And uh, we have been doing this until June 2020. Uh, with the spike of COVID, uh, we have learned a lot of things and we noticed a lot of gaps in our model. So we decided to pivot. Uh, we pivoted to a uh, POS uh, provider uh, to pharmacies with a special philosophy. Uh, today, uh, we are a uh, SaaS POS for pharmacies and beyond. Our philosophy is to, to not only provide software, to also encourage the growth of small and medium pharmacies through technical enablement and network empowerment. Our Prototype or phase one POS software. It includes uh, POS capabilities. It has product catalog, inventory moves. Uh, it connects to a uh, system of the government where it allows the tracking of medication. Uh, it has a daily dashboard where it has uh, live updates. Uh, you have sales and inventory reports and it has an accounting module. Our upcoming ecosystem uh, will be a full ERP with the uh, special features uh, where it includes the enablement of e-commerce, uh, e-prescriptions and prescription dispensing, uh, a full product catalog of all pharmacy products. Uh, we will connect with last mile delivery where it allows pharmacies to deliver to end users. It allows to the compliance of government regulation, and we will connect to suppliers as integrated inventory services. Uh, our business model, uh, we have a setup fee and then an annual subscription uh, service. Also, we offer hardware package. We have two hardware packages where we get a referral fee on. And we have added value services, such as data migration and on-ground installations. Uh, our business model and traction. So in phase one, uh, we make revenue on software revenues. Uh, phase two is a commission on the B2B purchases. Uh, we started uh, after we stopped in uh, June 2020, our aggregation, uh, our pharmacy aggregator model. Uh, we started developing our POS and we started piloting in September. Uh, we had 30 pharmacies that we approached. Uh, currently, we have five pharmacies on demo, and we have one uh, customer who signed, and we're currently in implementation to uh, get his system live. Uh, in KSA, there are 7,000 pharm retail pharmacies, and our uh, goal to capture 15% with around 1,000 pharmacies in the next five years. Our current team includes uh, myself as a founder, uh, the co-founder is my brother, who's a PhD uh, in, in, data, in data science uh, and pharmaceuticals. Uh, we have a CTO and we have a data lead and IT analyst, and we have a, a 
uh, and group of developers as well. Our value proposition is we have uh, friendly pricing Three schemes. Time is up. Um, okay. When the session starts. Sure. So. And your target market is Saudi Arabia. Yes. So our start target market is Saudi Arabia, and we will expand uh, to the region once we penetrate the Saudi market. Do you have competitors in other countries? Uh, I am fully aware of Saudi Arabia. I am not aware of other regions. In Saudi Arabia, there are other providers. However, with our latest technology, uh, we have uh, we we have more strength in what we in what we offer. Okay. Hi, Yusuf. Um... Hi, uh, great presentation. I, I just wanted to ask because as you alluded to, regulations are quite different. Even Saudi is very different from UAE, where I am. Um, I think uh, we, you know, we spoke to another company in the same space that is moving from Egypt to Saudi. So you might consider as well Egypt, which is uh, a huge uh, market uh, for you. My question would be like, uh, you know, would it be targeted for like pharmacy chains or also hospital pharmacies? And for that, like, you know, how to convince, because I've seen that many hospitals here would like to kind of uh, have an alternative to procure uh, medicine and drugs at cheaper prices. So how is your competitive advantage? Yes. That? So our focus in phase one is uh, smaller pharmacies. So more of independent and less than 30 uh, uh, a retail with, with less than 30 branches. So we're not targeting hospital nor bigger branches. Uh, our uh, initial 30 pharmacies included a pharmacy that have a clinic in the same company. So we're in discussion to provide the system for the clinic and the software for the pharmacy. But we're not targeting hospital nor uh, more than 30 branches at phase one. All right. And what's the onboarding time for you to set up your technology? So we are setting six weeks for the pharmacy from the day they sign to have their fully uh, active with all their information uh, moved to the new system. Uh, and you have one currently paying customer, correct? Uh, so they signed. They did not uh, transfer yet. We have the implementation plan to start in October uh, 15. So in the next few days. All right. Thank you. No problem. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, and we have to move to our last participant. Thank you, Yusuf. Uh, dear Aya, uh, please get ready. Uh, yes, do you hear me? Yep. Okay. I will share my screen. Okay. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Uh, okay. Before you start, uh, I would like to remind our uh, judges that uh, you have to vote and our participants are waiting for the interesting result. And as Aya is our last participant, please just have a look and uh, remind that you can change your uh, grades um, just to go to the voting platform and do changes if you need it. Thank you. Can I ask you before we start? Uh, yeah. I see the Dava in the list of the startups. They don't. Yes. Exactly. Um, unfortunately, they have uh, technical issues and uh, okay. don't join us right now. Just the way about Young Explorer Inc. Did done it already? Uh, please repeat. I didn't hear. McKevin, please repeat. Because I can, I see Dava and Young Explorer Inc. They has Young Explorer done it? Um, uh, Dava unfortunately can't join us. They were about Young Explorer. 
they've, they've already pitched. Aya is like Young Explorer. She's oh, going to okay. be doing that now. Oh, okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. Then. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I see. Okay. Uh, dear Aya, please uh, start when you're ready. And your time will start at the pitch. Hi, my name is Aya Dejani, the founder and CEO of Young Explorer. Um, four years ago, my uh, son started his rehabilitation journey in uh, Palestine uh, during Al Quds War. And most of the time, we don't have accessibility to the rehabilitation, ce rehabilitation centers. Uh, so we were uh, contacting the therapist uh, through internet and through the phone. And uh, with a deep uh, uh, dig in the market, we discovered that this is a general, a general problem in the MENA region. There are more than 10 million kids with learning difficulties at the MENA region who don't have accessibility to the rehabilitation centers. Due to the lack of the rehabilitation centers and their expensive services and a lot of social barriers in our communities. Uh, and in the same times, there are uh, uh, problems to the uh, therapists themselves. They have difficulties managing their patients at home, uh, at home and assigning home tasks to them. So uh, this problem has been maximized due to COVID-19 lockdown uh, because uh, there are uh, another 30% of uh, patients who have uh, rehabilit uh, who are going to the rehabilitation centers don't uh, have this uh, accessibility now. So Young Explorer will be the solution to this problem. We are providing the patients with uh, online rehabilitation plans at home that is monitoring uh, by uh, uh, expert therapist panel from our, uh, web, uh, from our uh, app. And uh, this solution will be a, a local solution uh, compar uh, comparing to uh, the solutions available in uh, in the market now, and they have the chance to uh, book online appointment with uh, uh, many uh, therapists on our platform. The patients will uh, manage their uh, the therapists will have the chance to manage their patients remote, uh, remotely and assign home tasks to them, and also uh, they could uh, uh, have accessibility to more patients. Our product is mobile application. Uh, for the patients, the product is uh, ready and uh, is being test, uh, testing uh, now. Uh, the the patient could uh, the family of the patient could check the re daily rehabilitation plan of uh, the uh, of their child. They could uh, they have to watch activity video. Uh, activity video to uh, know what uh, to do with their kids and they have to evaluate uh, their kids depending on his, uh, his response and they will get evaluation uh, result after uh, each video. Uh, the, the market is, this market is uh, new. In the MENA region, there, uh, there is mine, uh, mine left, but they are working only uh, on the physical, uh, on the physical caring, uh, not uh, they don't have functional and uh, speech therapy uh, that we are uh, focusing on. Globally, there are Sword Health, Gemini, and uh, a lot of other, uh, other competitors. Uh, the competitive advantages, we mentioned this uh, so far. Uh, the market size globally, there are more, uh, more than one, uh, 100 million uh, kids with, uh, don't have accessibility to the rehabilitation centers. In the MENA region, the number is 11 million, and we are targeting uh, initially 1% of uh, them. Uh, our uh, business model, we have three revenue stream. Uh, B2C, we are uh, providing the patients uh, with the freemium subscription with the monthly fees. Uh, B2B, uh, this premium subscription will be for uh, therapists and will be uh, yearly. And uh, we also will have percent uh, of each appointment cost that happen uh, on our platform. The traction, uh, our project, uh, our product is uh, on beta version now. We have uh, 200 uh, users for uh, the testing to prove our uh, model. We got uh, 90K uh, equity-free fund. Uh, 
uh, our, uh, we have seven uh, members in the team yeah, and I we are registered. I have to stop Welcome. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, and let's move to our Q&A session. Dear judges, see your turn. Hi, Aya. Hi. Uh, great presentation and uh, cool features you have uh, there. I was wondering if you could walk us through maybe your um, your customer acquisition and how you get the buy-in from the therapist as well as the users, I, I, like how they interacted uh, with your um, with your product, and how do you see uh, like how do you plan to expand if you are raising money, how it would be spent. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for now, we are uh, focusing mainly on uh, the social media channels to reach to our uh, patients. There are a lot of uh, mothers and families communities for, uh, for uh, families of kids with difficulties on the social media. So we are targeting them uh, there and uh, that's how we uh, reach the 200 uh, patients for uh, testing. Uh, for the therapists themselves, uh, so far we are contacting the therapist by uh, by direct contacting, uh, contacting. We are searching about them and contacting them, but this is because we are uh, didn't enter our uh, our testing for for the patient yet the, the product will for uh, the product for therapists will be finished after two months uh, and uh, what we will do with the money uh, for now we are uh, reaching uh, jordan and palestine markets which is very small market for testing and our plan is reaching the gulf and uh, egypt in the next stage and this is um, mainly how we will use the money and uh, also to improve our AI uh, algorithm that we are uh, using to enhance the result of uh, setting plans and uh, plans and reports. Thank you. And um, have you thought of uh, maybe, you know, having um, a different relationship and onboarding the therapists or as contractors, like uh, selected number of uh, therapists to to be the the front uh, you know at the front page and uh, being the experts uh, yes we, we are doing this so far we have uh, four uh, four experts uh, in our uh, in our team and they will be working uh, will be working on uh, a assessment uh, the, uh, the first assessment of each uh, patients all right thank you best of luck Thank you so much. Um, so any questions? Dear judges, um, uh, have a look at uh, your uh, voting platform. Um, you have last minute to do some changes uh, and uh, we will close voting. Dilek, can you stop sharing the screen? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, that was our last participant, right? And we have a minute to finish voting. And uh, Lila, please share the poll. We would like to know your opinion. What industry do you think has the most investment potential from African and MENA region point of view? And I will tell you some insights we have from uh, the continents also and talk a little bit about it. Just choose the industries that you think personally uh, that um, are right industries for investors right now and just push a button submit and we will tell you in a second what will be happening. And uh, while you're doing that, Alexander, please tell us uh, what we have also for our winner today. Yes, uh, usually we invite our winner to the meeting with VCs who are the members of our VC house. So um, on our deal flow, in our deal flow room, uh, we have more time to talk to the startup 
who want the competition, local competition, and so to understand the startups closely and more. So it's a kind of uh, present uh, presence, yeah, for for the gift for the startup. And of course, if you are a VC and you are still not a part of our exclusive community, join us uh, here with us. Uh, you can see Natasha with us today, Natalie. Yeah, and you can send her message, or he can just. Uh, publish again in the chat the link and to join VC House and of course the winner will be presenting the startup in the final yes Anna absolutely yes of course as every winner of our unicorn battles does yes it's a great opportunity so please guys keep your fingers crossed because I see the lilies winking me do we have, do we, you know who the winner is, right? Yeah, I already know. Right. Please tell us. Uh huh. Okay. Yep. First place. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we'll start as always from the third one. So uh, the third one uh, is key to enable assistive technology. So, dear Jose. My congratulations. Wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you very much. <laughs> Honored. Congratulations. Next one. Second place goes to Universal DX. Uh, Christian, am wow. I right? My congratulations. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, way to go. And can, can you can you show us the can, can you show us the uh, event page so we can make sure that they also see who the winner is. And the winner is yeah. Go to startup section. We see on like ah, uh, we see it already. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And the winner is cardio diagnostics. Woohoo! Our congratulations. Yeah, Thank you congratulations. so much. <laughs> Thank you. That was a great, great opportunity. Job. And your more yeah, more opportunities to come. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. So you're our finalist from the Health Tech Africa and MENA region. And Lila will contact you, tell you what's going to happen next. And everybody, please stay tuned. Lila, thank you very much. You can stop screen sharing and please share with us the poll results. And so we can start our little networking. Okay, let's see mm -hmm. what is on our mind. So what's our expert board thinks today? Uh-huh, so health tech, <laughs> you see. Uh-huh, maybe it's because we have a health tech battle today. What do you think, Alexander? And then the fintech, you think, and then agrotech, surprisingly. Haha. <laughs> that's that's really interesting. Uh, you know, guys, I just uh, did my little research and I got the results that Africa is like number one in investments in fintech. Uh, the second one is manufacturing, and the third one is games industry, right? Like no health tech, like. And what concerns MENA region, the first one is uh, renewable energy, like energy. In impact. Uh, the second one e is e-commerce and third one FinTech. So that's like what we have uh, from uh, the media. And uh, I would like to hear what you think. Uh, Louisa, you, you scroll like a lot of countries uh, in this particular regions. What, what's your opinion? Are, like, is media right or we are right? Um, I think there's a truth in both, but like, um, and it's changing fast, I would say. So we've seen health tech really, you know, uh, rising because challenges with COVID have been like more apparent. Uh, and needed uh, fintech as well, like because the way we pay for things, the fact that they don't have access to banks in many countries, uh, like the power disruption that everything now is moving to the mobile. So, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. is the mobile phone gonna enable in health, in fintech, in industry, and even in agro? 
Uh, Agrotech for me uh, will be on the rise with food security being at the top of the agenda. So that would be my, my sort of uh, priority, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, good. Well, thank you for sharing that. What, uh, Kabir, what can you tell us? Oh, Kabir, just like, oh, like, uh, Makeve, what can you tell yes. us from the South African perspective? Yeah, I think um, from South Africa, I think hard tech is really, is really, is really pushing. But um, um, if, if fintech and agritech, agritech is something that um, I, I think right now a lot of investors are also looking into agritech because they haven't really explored it a lot in in in, in Africa. There's just so much opportunity with regards to to to, to farming in the continent in the continent that really need. Um, that really need um, investment. So startups that are coming from that space are really, really doing um, well as well. But another thing is, is data, because uh, collecting data is one thing that is critical in Africa right now. So uh, if we could get startup data into that space, uh, trust me, there is, a, there is a lot of traction. It's a lot of traction um, right now with regard, to, with regard to data as well. Okay. But I mentioned, I saw you talk about gamin, uh, gamification. It's really, uh -huh. really, it's really picking up really, really well within the, within the, within the West, uh, West and Central, uh, Central, Central Africa. So yes, because... it, 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 yeah, it's one of those, it's one of those point now that are, um, that are, that people are looking for to regards to education and, 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 and other, and, and others. They're using a gamification a, a, a lot right now as well. That's really good to hear because like I know what distincts Africa from all other regions in the world that you uh, guys jumped like from no phones to cellular phones. You skipped the wire phones and uh, that makes like the vast opportunities like all those applications, the access like to all other uh, stuff that like can, can be put in the cellular phone and cannot be put like you know on the phone so uh you have like a really different way of uh development like yes. it differs from the region yes we really have a completely different way of uh, development within the within within, uh, within the region so i think we need to start looking at uh um uh, like agri we are looking at gamification which is really which is really coming up like like really seriously have a lot of opportunities going forward. Okay, wonderful. Yeah, uh, think that. Okay, thank you. Uh, if anybody wants to share their perspective, like from their point of view, I would love to hear your opinion. Dear yeah, judges, anyone? Um, I think we are right in our poll because, because health tech is the most important for everybody and, and for everyone. Right uh, now. <laughs> <laughs> but now and maybe in the future, because you can live without a very cool AI, but you cannot live if your health is broken. Yeah. So yes, probably this is the most important uh, industry. Uh, in so in we are doing really good thing right now, yeah. right? We well, are like investing yeah. in our health right now. Yeah. I, I hope we will live more than previous generations. <laughs> to do more good things, right? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys are already, you guys are already doing a great job, um, <laughs> um, Anna, and I, again, like I said in my opening when I was talking there, you guys are already doing an amazing job. I think you've taken um, you are already uh, pushing like into into Africa. I think that what, what you guys are doing is what Africa really really needs um, at the moment. There are a lot of there are a lot of potential like great startups. Within 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 the continent, who uh, just have need access to to invest more, access to, to to capital, and they don't have. But I think one thing that we need to we need to we need to we need to push is um, is um, is um, is marketing and promote and really promoting and promoting start, um, start up uh, start up the network within the continent. I think once once we're getting that base uh, within the, within the continent. That we are sure that we will attract quite a lot because now the truth is we 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 are not reaching we are not really reaching every everyone. I think it it is very important that we we look at really reaching the, 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 even the deeper and the localized startups that don't even have. You'll be amazed 
are the kind of startups that we will attract if we get if we get if we get traction into into the continent. That's great. Yes, we are trying to broaden our outreach. So if anybody hears us that you haven't seen Net Startup Network yet at your fans, just give us a call or just send us an email and we'll be there. And right, uh, Lily? We ask you to share the results yeah, on our page, in your networks, in Facebook, in LinkedIn. So many All other us. can come and see and invest in the startups which presented today. And Anna, what is uh, our, our plans? Our what? plans to uh, help FinTech <laughs> to rise up <laughs> yeah. and yeah. also to help AI to succeed all over the world because like there'll be a FinTech battle in Europe and there'll be an AI in South America. Uh, Lily, can, can you share? Us? Can I'm you already share? sharing. <laughs> okay, this on battles. So please uh, join us for those wonderful events and more events to come. Our finals on the 20th of November, but before that, every, tu every Tuesday, every Thursday, we are online and really happy to see you wherever you are, wherever we are. So everyone is welcome. See you in our next battle. Thank you for coming today. Great battle. See yeah. you, see you everyone, and I uh, wish everyone the best. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you, bye-bye. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much, bye-bye. Thank you, it was an honor. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much, great event. Please, let's connect, let's connect on, on, on LinkedIn. Let's do this. <laughs>